what's the difference between all the proxy modes in DaVinci Resolve? There are a lot of them, and it can be a little bit confusing if you're not familiar with how they work and what they do. So in this video, I'm gonna just walk you through all the different options that you have for creating proxies or proxy-like modes in DaVinci Resolve and which ones you should choose and why. As far as I can tell, there are essentially six different types of proxies in DaVinci Resolve. Optimized media, proxy media, render cache, render in place, timeline proxy, and timeline resolution, which isn't really a proxy mode, but it is essentially the same thing as timeline proxy mode. So I figured I'd throw it in there. A way to think about it or organize these different proxies, they it can be broken down into pretty much two different categories. You've got proxies that exist in the pre-edit stage. So when you're just organizing all of your media and before you've even started editing, these are like the traditional proxies. And in DaVinci Resolve, those are the optimized media proxies as well as just the proxy media. And these are what you just take all your source footage or whichever source footage clips that you want to create proxies for and just go ahead and just batch them out, create proxies before you even start editing and then use those proxy clips in place of the original source media. And then at the very end, when you export your project and render it, it will switch back over to the source clips. If you want to, you could also use the proxy media if they're high enough quality for you. The other ones, and these are these are categories that I essentially made up, but they exist during the project. So while you're while you're working on your edit, while you're working on on effects or in the color page, anytime that you're having trouble playing back clips with effects applied to them, then you can go ahead and generate render cache, you can render in place, or you can change the playback or timeline resolution in order to get better playback. So if you render cache something and you're able to play it back, if you make any changes to that clip, it's gonna delete that render cache and have to re-render it. So that's what I mean by being dynamic and temporary. So which ones should you use? The biggest decision, or really the only deci decision, is at the beginning of your project if you're deciding between proxy media and optimized media. Because the other modes are dynamic and they're changing all the time, and you can just incorporate those uh, into your workflow at any time. If you're a solo editor and you're the only one working on your projects, like you know for YouTube or just if you're in video production, you do your own edits, etc., you can just go ahead and use optimized media. The difference between optimized media and Proxy media is essentially the flexibility that proxy media gives you. It's essentially a standalone file that you can play back in other NLEs. You can play it back in media players. Whereas optimized media gives you the exact same performance benefits because you can set both proxy media and optimized media to the same codecs and the same resolutions. But Resolve puts them in the cache file and it doesn't wrap it in a container that you can play back in anything else other than DaVinci Resolve. So that it only exists for that project. If you wanna use the same footage in another project, you're gonna to have to regenerate the media. So if you want to use the same footage across multiple projects, go ahead and create proxy media. If you only need the footage for one project and you're the only one working on it, then just use optimized media. In the media page in DaVinci Resolve, this is where you sh probably should be thinking about proxy media to generate before you start editing your project. Once you have all the footage imported into your timeline, if you haven't already come to your project settings or opened up your project settings, let's go ahead and do that now. So under optimized media and render cache, this is where you're gonna set the media resolution format for all of the proxy options that you have in Resolve from the proxy media to optimized media to render cache. And these might be different depending on whether you're on a Mac or Windows PC. This is a Windows PC, so we have the options for DNX. If you're on a Mac, you're gonna have more options for ProRes, but DNX and ProRes are essentially equivalent. As far as resolution, you have these options. So original is gonna be the this same resolution as the source clips. Half would obviously be half, quarter, one eighth, one sixteenth. So for choose automatically, if your source clips have a higher resolution than your timeline resolution, it will automatically create proxies at your timeline resolution. If your source clips are of the same resolution as your timeline, it'll just set it to that resolution. If you're confused about whether to choose proxy media or optimized media, because you don't understand like if one is gonna be faster or slower or better quality, as long as you set these to be the same, the quality will be the same. Another option, to consider is how quickly Resolve will start rendering the cache. So you can set this up to anywhere between one second and 30 seconds. So what this just means is if you stop doing anything on your timeline, this tells Resolve how long to wait before it starts rendering the cache. And from there, once you have all that set up, select all the clips that you want to create proxies for, right click on one of them. And then here you can just decide whether you want to generate optimized media 
or generate proxy media. So if you choose this one, it'll just go ahead and start doing it and it'll tell you how long it's gonna take based on the settings that we chose. If you navigate to where your cache clips live and open up cache clip, and then there is an optimized media folder, and this is today's date, and this is the file that it created. You can see this is not something that we can play back anywhere. So that's what optimized media does. Now, if we take this same clip and generate proxy media, now we just navigate to that proxy media folder. We can find our clip. So this is something that we could play back. There is the essential difference between proxy media and optimized media. So now it has substituted the original source clip for the proxy clip. Now at any time you can unlink the proxy media, but you have to do that in the media page. So come back over to the media page. And if you right click on the clip that has been proxied, or you can highlight all the clips that have been proxied, you can select unlink proxy media. And that will revert back to the original source clip. And if at any point you want to relink the proxy media, you can just hit the link button again. So these proxies will stay with these clips for as long as the project exists and as long as you don't move the proxies from their original folder. On the timeline, you also have the ability to generate optimized media. So if you later on wish to generate optimized media after you've already started working on the project, you can still do that. Let's go ahead and start looking at the render cache, render in place, timeline proxy mode, and timeline resolution. So as you saw from our project settings, the render cache format and the optimized media and proxy media formats can be the same things. But just to let you know, then render cache is going to generate the same type of media as either of those two do as well, but it's just gonna do it on a dynamic basis during the project while you're working on it. It could be doing it in Fusion, or in color. In order to make that happen, come up to the playback heading at the top of DaVinci Resolve, come down to render cache, and you have these options for none, which means it will never render cache, smart, which means that it will utilize that setting that you chose to wait for however long before it starts rendering clips that are bogging down your timeline. So it kind of does it on a, an artificially intelligent basis. And then user means that it will only render cache for clips that you select. Feels a little bit wonky to me. I feel like with Resolve 17, something might be missing. So if you set it to user and right click on a clip that you want to render cache, you used to have an option that essentially said render cache, but now it seems like they've done away with that and you have render cache fusion, fusion output and render cache color output. And so it's a little confusing to me where that option went, but if you select render cache fusion output and just hit yes or on, you can see here now it's rendering this clip. So I guess that that is the new way to do it. I don't know if that's an error or an oversight, but it's not clear because there's not been a manual put out for Resolve 17 yet, but this seems to work. So you can see it's rendering it. Anytime you make a change to a clip that has been cached, it's going to delete that cache and have to re-render. If we make a cut, you can see it's deleted that cache and starting over. So again, dynamic temporary for render cache. So at any point you can right click on a clip and come up to render in place. And now you have essentially the same options that you have in your pro project settings to create a proxy from this clip on your timeline. So you can select the format from all of these different options. You can select the codec from, again, different options, the resolution and bit depth, include video effects. So anything that has been applied to these clips, if you want to include those, you're gonna want to have that check mark. Otherwise, it's just going to render the source clip as a proxy which might be essentially defeating the purpose. If you want to create a proxy at this point, you most likely want to include the effects on it and then include handles. And then once you hit OK, it's going to bring up your Explorer or your Finder and will give you the option to save these wherever you want to. And these is essentially the same thing as creating proxies before you even start editing. But now you have the ability to create proxy media that already has effects on it. Wherever you've done to it, you can generate new proxy media including all of those effects. So pretty cool. The last two, if you come up to playback and come down to timeline proxy mode, you have three options, off, half resolution, and quarter resolution. So these are not proxies. So these are not generating new files. This is just changing the resolution of your timeline temporarily to get better playback. And then when you go out to render your project, it's going to revert back to the timeline resolution that you set initially. So these are just, just to get better playback without having to generate proxies, without having to add more files to your hard drive. At any point during your project, you can change the timeline resolution of your project. So 
If you are getting slow playback, you can change your project to 1920 by 1080 or bring it down to 720 and just hit save and Resolve will dynamically rescale everything so that it will fit the aspect ratio of your project and you can continue on your merry way. Now, when you go to deliver, you want to make sure that you either go back to your project settings and save it to the resolution that you wish to deliver in or come to your resolution and set it back to 3840 by 2160. And even though you started working in a 1920 by 1080 timeline, as long as you set your output resolution back to Ultra HD, you're good to go. So that's just another option. Again, you have the ability to change that at any time, and it's essentially the same thing as going to timeline proxy mode and changing it to half resolution or quarter resolution. Well, that is a lot of information, but hopefully I covered it in a way that was reasonably understandable and concise, and hopefully you learned something and are able to create all the proxies you will ever need for the rest of time. If you liked the video, maybe hit that like button. It only takes a few calories. And while you're down there, maybe just hop on over and hit the subscribe button if you have that much energy left after watching this video. I know it's draining. Anyway, appreciate it. And we'll see you in another video. What is the deal with proxies? See, that's not funny. And now you are ready to go on and proxy the shit out of your footage.